Hey, how you doing, Flip Geometry? Ready for another one of these? We're going to jump into Chapter 5 today, talking about orthocenter and circumcenter. So we're still in triangle land, and we are looking at now how to find various kinds of centers of triangles. Uh, now, triangle is not as easy to find a center of as like a circle or a square, where things are regular and normal shaped. Triangles can be any kind of shape and any kind of you know angle measures and all different kinds of triangles. So how do you find the center of one of those oddly shaped things? Well, there's three ways, and we're going to show them to you um, in just a moment here. The first two, we're going to be in this lecture, and then we'll get the next, uh, the next one or two after that. So circumcenter and orthocenter. Here we go. So the uh, first thing we need to do is review the idea of a, of a perpendicular bisector. And a perpendicular bisector, we've, we've constructed these before, we've talked about these before, and now we're going to introduce another little feature about a perpendicular bisector. A point lies on a perpendicular bisector of a segment if and only if it's equidistant from its endpoints. In other words, you can take any point along an, a perpendicular bisector, just drop a point on there, and that point will be equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment that this line is a perpendicular bisector to. Okay, so this line is constructed of a set of points that are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So that's going to be an important feature as we move forward in the conversation here today. So if we take these um, perpendicular bisectors, we can find an interesting kind of center of a triangle. But first, one more concept we want to review. Um, that is the idea of being circumscribed. A, uh, a circle can be drawn around a polygon so that the circle touches all of the vertices of that polygon. And um, you can circumscribe any kind of polygon, uh, but here we're specifically talking about triangles. So to circumscribe a triangle means you find a circle that you can draw, and that circle catches all of the points, all of the vertices of the triangle. That's a circumscribed uh, circle around the triangle. Um, we find the center of that circumscribed circle by finding the perpendicular bisectors of all three sides of the triangle and finding the point where those three uh, perpendicular bisectors meet, where they converge, where they are concurrent. Okay, So um, any circle containing all of a polygon's vertices is said to be circumscribed around the polygon. The intersection of a triangle's perpendicular bisectors is the circumcenter. And so that's the center of a circumscribed circle. Let me show you a picture. This circle is circumscribed around that triangle. So you can see that the circle touches all three vertices of the triangle. And the center of the circle that does that is at what's called the circumcenter. So circumcenter of the triangle is the center of a circumscribed circle. That's why it's called the circumcenter, because it's the center of the circumscribed tri circle around the triangle. Okay, And we found that center by finding the perpendicular bisector of all three sides of the triangle and looking at where they are concurrent, where do they converge. Okay, So you will do that a couple times today. So stating that formally, uh, we would say that the circumcenter theorem is that the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle are concurrent at the circumcenter, the point that is equidistant from its vertices. So here's uh, all of the the perpendicular bisectors of this triangle, we find the place where they are concurrent, where they intersect, and that point is equidistant from all three vertices of the triangle, and that will be the point where we can draw a circumscribed circle. Okay, if you have any questions about that, look at the couple of examples we just did, or uh, talk to me tomorrow in class, we'll work it all out together. Now again, I'm not very heavy on constructions when I teach geometry personally, but in case this is being used by other people, let me show you how to construct the uh, circumcenter and a circumscribed circle around a triangle. Okay, so we start with triangle PQR, and what we need to do is find the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to find the perpendicular bisector of that segment. Now, you could also find the perpendicular bisector of this one, but uh, once you have two, you can see that intersection point. This one will also line up at that intersection point, right? It's going to go right through here. Um, and now that you have a center, now you just use that as the center, and you take a compass, and you measure to the uh, point 
to any point of the triangle because it will be equidistant from here to all three of these points of the triangle and you draw yourself a circle. Okay, that's the center and you'll use that as the center of a circle. Okay, there you go. That's how you construct a circumscribed circle. The other kind of center we're going to look at, it doesn't have to do with perpendicular bisectors, it has to do with altitudes. So an altitude of a triangle is a segment that extends from a vertex and is perpendicular to the line containing the opposite side. Now, there's some qualifiers in there. It comes out of the vertex of a triangle and it strikes the other side of the triangle at a 90 degree angle. But sometimes you have to draw this, this line actually outside the triangle. So we can't just say it strikes the opposite side at 90 degrees because sometimes that's not possible. You have to extend the side of the triangle that you're going to strike out past the triangle to find where you can hit it at a 90 degree angle. Whenever you've done that, you have created an altitude altitude. We think of an altitude um, in the clearest sense as, you know, if a triangle is drawn like this, it's the height of the triangle. That's why it's called an altitude. But sometimes, you know, if you have a triangle like this, you can draw the altitude this way, and then all of a sudden it doesn't look like it should be called an altitude. But it's the same feature, right? It comes out of the vertex of a triangle and strikes the line containing the opposite side at a 90 degree angle. Let's show you some examples. All three of these triangles are drawn with their altitude. So sometimes the altitude is inside the triangle, as it is here. Sometimes the altitude is the side of a triangle. If it's a right triangle, then this is an altitude, and so is this, right? Sometimes it is a leg of a right triangle. Sometimes the altitude is outside the triangle, like it is here, where we have to extend the side of the triangle out and then strike it at a 90 degree angle, okay? So all three of those, those are altitudes of a triangle and we're going to use them to find another kind of center. If I use three altitudes drawn from the three vertices of the triangle, I will find that the three altitudes uh, are concurrent at some point. They overlap, they intersect. So here on this triangle, this is an altitude, this is an altitude, and this is an altitude. They all come out of the vertex and strike the opposite side at a 90 degree angle. In this particular example, the center is inside the triangle. Sometimes you'll find that this kind of center is outside the triangle, but um, in any case, it's where the three altitudes overlap. This kind of center is called the orthocenter. So the orthocenter theorem is that the lines that contain the altitudes of a triangle are concurrent at the orthocenter. So an orthocenter is where the three altitudes um, intersect or are concurrent. Let's do some examples with this. Find the coordinates of the triangle's orthocenter. So here I have a triangle, and I can uh, plot two at least, uh, all three would be more accurate, of the vertices' uh, altitudes, and I find that the altitudes overlap here at point O, and then I could just read on the graph that that's 2, 1. This is an analytical geometry example. Um, some of your examples will not require coordinates, but it's a finding these, this kind of center is, is pretty simple. And that's all she wrote, folks. If you have any questions, we'll address them tomorrow in class, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.